Hello, my name is Caroline Radowski and today I'm going to be sharing with you my personal reflection upon the book written by John Wooden, Coach Wooden's Leadership Game Plan for Success, 12 Lessons for Extraordinary Performance and Personal Excellence. Within this oral, I shall be discussing John Wooden as a leader and what made him such an inspiration to us all. And I'll be reflecting upon my personal experiences as a team player of a soccer team and a leader at a university as a lecturer. I'll be using the concepts John Wooden introduced to us throughout the book of the Pyramid of Success and his 12 lessons in leadership that he learnt throughout the span of his career. I'll also be using the examples as a team player and as a leader at a university as to how I'm going to apply these to everyday life and this will be included in my summary. So let's begin with Coach Wooden as a leader. What made him such an inspiration? Well, Coach Wooden, he was born on October the 14th, 1910, and he died on June the 4th, 2011. He was one of the first players inducted into the All-America team, which won three national championships. He later um, started his coaching career, and he was most successful in his leadership as a coach of the UCLA basketball team. His coaching led to 10 national championship wins and 88 consecutive wins for his basketball team. The book was written in order to teach people the fundamental principles of leadership and how to succeed as a leader in life. And we can see as John Wooden being inducted as a national coach of the year seven times and also into the Hall of Fame as a player and as a coach that he is an inspirational leader and really only two other people have achieved these merits. So my own personal experience within the Strathdale Soccer Club as a goalkeeper will be used to examine his book. And also, secondly, I'll be using the 12 lessons in application to my job as a lecturer at La Trobe University in Podiatry. So firstly, let's start with one of the quotes that I think um, demonstrate Coach Wooden's main principles of teaching. And that is, strive to accomplish the very best that you are capable of. Nothing less than your best effort will suffice. You may fool others, but you can never fool yourself. Self-satisfaction will come from the knowledge that you left no stone unturned in an effort to accomplish everything possible under the circumstances. This quote highlights that success can only be achieved if a person knows and feels they have applied themselves in every way possible. Even if others think you are a success, you'll never fool yourself in knowing that you could have worked harder. And basically that means putting in 100% effort all the time. The Pyramid of Success was created by Wooden in 1948 and it represents 15 personal qualities that are necessary for achieving competitive greatness or success. It is emphasised throughout the 15 qualities that this hard work, the 100%, is necessary to achieve each one of these qualities. And sometimes we need to recognise where we're not putting in 100% and really that could be holding us out back from achieving success or competitive greatness. Now, reflecting upon my experience as a goalkeeper at the Strathdale women's soccer team, um, I looked at these 15 qualities and saw that a few of them weren't being fulfilled. I have been the goalkeeper for the Strathdale Soccer Club for the past two years and this year for the first time since the 1980s, we became runner-up of the league. Applying John Wooden's Pyramid of Success and analysing these 15 qualities, there were three that I identified that we were not fulfilling. These qualities included industriousness, skill and confidence. Team players, including myself, did not always apply themselves 100% to every training session and we also did not attend every training session as required. And according to John Wooden, to achieve industriousness, which is the first tier down there, we need to rise above the level of hard work and that success travels in the company of hard work. And that's really derived from that first quote there, that we need to put in 100% effort all the time. The team, by not attending the training sessions and not training at full capacity, we failed to work enough throughout the season to become a success. This lack of consistency and effort from the team members at training was translated throughout the season with game results yo-yoing from winning to losing. The yo-yo effect was discussed in the book where Joan Wooden described teams that did not work hard consistently would also show inconsistent wins and losses. Industriousness, which is located within the first tier of the pyramid of success and also highlighted in that red circle down there, 
was translated to our other qualities in the third and the fourth tiers. And these were skill, okay, located here in the third tier, and confidence located in the fourth tier. Now, as a goalkeeper, I observed most of the games and the matches. And throughout our grand final, it was apparent that the team could not perform basic game plays, and really our passes and our kicks were often off target and not to the right players. The winning team executed every game play successfully and they passed with perfection and their kicks were always in the right place. And that's probably why they ended up winning. Confidence throughout the game was also lacking, with players including myself who were doubting our game plays and hesitating on kicks. So basically these hesitations led to the opposition regaining ball possession and ultimately a goal. I believe that skill and confidence was lacking in our team because we were not industrious and we failed to apply ourselves 100% of the time at training. And this is really John Wooden's most basic principle and what the book is based off is that we need to apply ourselves in, in order to achieve success. The pyramid of success can also be applied to my job as a lecturer at La Trobe University. Reflecting upon these qualities, I'm realising that I am achieving most of these qualities and my feedback from students and staff has been positive. And these are all based on independent evaluations. However, applying John Wooden's 12th lesson in leadership, I need to start thinking about never be satisfied, work constantly to improve. Perfection is the goal that can never be reached, but it must be the objective. The uphill climb is slow, but the downhill road is fast. Basically, this, this quote here, and also with Lesson 7, Make Each Day Your Master's Piece, are principles that I follow throughout my teaching. I'm aware that my feedback is positive. However, I could become too complacent and not apply myself completely 100% each day which could lead to poor leadership results in the future. I need to be more innovative with my teaching and continue to refine and reflect upon my teaching so I can adapt my teaching and recognise where students are not engaging in the material. So that's where Lesson 9 comes into play, and that's make greatness available to everybody. If I do not recognise that students are struggling with the subject material, then success is only achievable to those students who are naturally gifted at academia. Therefore, greatness cannot be achieved by everyone. To improve my teaching, I need to follow Lesson 11, which is really, don't look at the scoreboard. By only looking at my recent evaluations, I could become unconcerned and believe that I have already succeeded and do not need to continue hard working. In Coach Wooden's book, we see that um, we shouldn't really take the success straight away because it's much harder to actually keep that success and stay on top of your game than it is to actually achieve it the first time. Eventually, if I didn't do this, then it would translate to poor evaluations and me not become a successful leader. This is a fear of mine that I recognised upon reflection within the questions at the end of the book. And I also didn't want to become a leader that possesses the qualities of arrogance and not being approachable to, to, for students. This would mean that I'm not really teaching effectively and not being successful. I do not value these qualities in a leader and personally I'm going to try and work harder every day on improving my lessons so that they're more applicable and meaningful to all students. So really coming from the book I've um, highlighted some qualities and lessons that I'll need to apply to both my soccer team and my professional life as a lecturer. I have learned by not, me not being industrious and also team members not being industrious within the soccer team whilst in our training, it's really affected our skill and our confidence levels. I believe this is the main reason why the team did not win the championship this year. I recognise that within my professional role, these qualities are being achieved and as a result, I'd consider myself successful. I do, however, recognise that I should continue to apply lessons 7, 9 and 11 as discussed before, which are based around not being too complacent, as with this I could potentially stop working hard at 100% and become a failure. I will now continue to improve my lectures and try to make every student an outstanding learner. And by doing this, I'll become a successful leader. 
And in my ending summary of the book, and I believe this is one of the most meaningful summaries, is a successful leader means that your team will achieve greatness. And that's what I hope for both my soccer team and my students at the uni. The reference for the book is as followed. Thank you very much for listening.